Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Into the Podcast. I'm your host Sam and I'm joined each and every week by the beautiful Ryan. Hey up. Hey up, mate, you alright? You didn't full name me. I didn't full name you. <laughs> How does it feel not full naming you? I feel like something's missing now. Cause yeah. Because we've been like, I don't know, a lot of episodes with you full naming me. Two years of full Two naming. Two years of full naming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll go, re- don't even realise you're doing it. I'll go back to full naming you, Ryan Chitton. Okay, thanks. Are we all good, mate? Yes. Not too bad, thank you. Good, mate. How are you? I'm all right. Getting tired now. Mm. Not going to lie, this is the fourth episode we've recorded today. (laughs) Back to back. So we're getting a little bit sleepy, aren't we? It's been a long, long day. It takes it out of you more than you'd think. Oh, yeah. Even though we just sat here talking. Yeah. And just a little bit of editing in between. It's... It's a long, nearly seven hours we've been sat here recording. It's a long episodes. time. It is a long time. I can't remember a time I wasn't sat here. No, I, you know what? I don't remember life. <laughs> like this is just this. my life forever now. <laughs> I'm fine with it. It's okay because yeah. we're giving the people what they want. Oh, absolutely. Our voice, top quality content. Exactly. <laughs> and the whole reason that we are doing four episodes back to back is Ryan is soon to be at this very moment that we're recording, soon to be a father. When this comes out, Ryan will be a father. Indeed, he will indeed. But. That's why we're going to do this episode today, because you are about to hit fatherhood, or are in fatherhood now, to, you know, the future, are, when this comes out. These tenses are <laughs> messing with my mind, my weary mind. <laughs> messing with my melon, man. Um, so yeah, you, you are now a father. Um, how is the baby? Um, yes, no. all good. <laughs> why not? <laughs> So, what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be looking at some some of actually the greatest movies of all time. We're looking oh, yeah. at Pixar films. Disney, Disney Pixar. Pixar. Oh, yeah. This was one that um, you brought up when we was discussing uh, what topics we could chat. And I think this is a really fitting topic, seeing as we're doing this to prep you to be a father. Mm. And uh, when you're a father, you're going to be watching a lot of these films. Oh, I imagine. Back to back to back yeah. to back. <laughs> just on repeat and the forever. Good, and the good thing about these films, what I'm looking at, I've just wrote a few down, is a lot of these films we've been through because when kids are in something, that's all they want to watch. You know? yes. we've, we've done the uh, we've done the Frozen and the Moana and all that lot. But a lot of these films on this list, we've been through that stage of watching them on repeat. There ain't a single one of these that I got bored of and I've now seen them a hundred times. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean, yeah. And I think Pixar fits really well in that. Mm. Of It doesn't matter how many times you see it. Always a beautiful moral story behind oh, yeah. it. Always fun. Always funny. Vibrant. Just beautiful films. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's a bit of a hard one, isn't it? Because Disney has split down the middle of what is what and I, I still want to know what's Pixar and what's not Pixar. Yeah, that's it and I was just looking at that. So Pixar is just an animation studio yeah. that releases films through Disney. Mm. So you still have Disney films so things like Moana is a Disney film, it's not Disney not Pixar, Pixar film. Yeah. So Pixar have got I've just had a look here, 28 <laughs> feature films as early as 1995 which its first one was Toy Story. Toy Story. And then its latest one, as of recording, was Inside, Inside Out, Out 2, yeah. which was released in June yes. 2024. Yes. Um, yeah, so how do you want to do this? We can just talk. Do you want to get Snack out of the way? Yeah, get shall snack we? Snack out of the way nice and early, and then we can just chat pictures. And we can films. just jump from some of our favourites to some mate. that we might have seen or not as keen on, or some that we haven't seen and really want to. I'll be honest, I don't think there's any I haven't seen or don't want to. So it's going to be quite an interesting, oh, interesting. conversation. I think there's quite a few that I haven't seen, actually. Ooh, we can talk that. Yes. So first things first, let's get our little friend out of his uh, box. We've been playing a lot of video games with Drew recently, and I've enjoyed it. Me too, yeah, I it's have. It's great to have Drew back. Even if he is just a voice on a headset, it's better to have that Drew than no Drew. Oh, oh yeah, totally Doesn't agree. It? So Drew, come out of the box and sing us in, baby. Here come Sam and Ryan, listen to them both speak. They've come for hours all with their pop culture critique. But are you even a nerd if you don't overread? So come on everybody, it's the snack of the week. Oh my god, that was Drew Flanagan of Drew Flanagan Music. It really was. And you know what? I've heard that Drew Flanagan of Drew Flanagan Music doesn't just do jingles. He doesn't. He does real music by a real band. <laughs> by, what's the band called? Drew Flanagan Music. <laughs> Where can you hear Drew Flanagan Music? On all your musical streaming Hell platforms. no, like what? Like Apple Music. Yeah. Amazon Music. Oh my god, I use that. Spotify Music. I use that, but just for podcasts. But you know what? 
I've liked Drew on it and given him a five star review. There you go. I don't even know if you can do that. You can't. You can't follow him. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, we've been so good at these recently. (laughs) Not as good today. Keep going. Keep going. Um, What What else can you do with Drew Flanagan music? Oh my god! I bet you could watch him. I bet you could. I bet if you went on YouTube and you typed in Drew Flanagan music, you could see his little beautiful face singing songs. Singing little beautiful songs. (laughs) Alongside his little beautiful band. Exactly. <laughs> but do you reckon he plays live? He, he probably does play live. Should we go see him sometime? Yeah, let's do that. How can we check where he's playing and Oh, when? my God. I bet I bet he's got social media like Facebook and Instagram that you could follow Drew Flanagan Music on and it'll tell you where he's playing and when he's playing. And you know what? You could go there and watch him play and we will be there. Probably, maybe. Maybe. We were there last time. <laughs> we were there last time and it was a great time. Yeah, it was. That was Drew Flanagan of Drew Flanagan Music. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> what snack have we got today? <laughs> <laughs> Getting tired, man. <laughs> oh, well, our good friends. Our fourth snack of the day. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and we've had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we've just got snacks everywhere on <laughs> this table. So our good friends over at McVitie's, you know the company that gave us some vouchers yes. to buy snacks for Snack of the Week? That, very good of them, that. <laughs> well, we've got some McVitie's and we're going to tell you just how great these McVitie's are. These are a McVitie's tartlet lemon flavour. Tartlet. Tartlet, which is a crunchy biscuit with a delicious centre. Ooh. Each biscuit contains 2% of your daily energy. That's quite a lot in a biscuit. (laughs) Oh, my, these smell delicious, mate. Oh, go on. It it smells like lemon meringue pie. Interesting. (sighs) Ooh. Or a lemon cheesecake. Sniff it. Oh, oh I love lemon flavour. I things. love lemon as well. In a wanna? Do you reckon? I don't know to go. I'm going in a wanna. Yeah, mate. they're only like little biscuits. Yeah, go on. Let's pop, pop it in your mouth. Pop the little tart, tart tartlet. Lit. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> been a while since you've done that <laughs> bit dry mm, but all biscuits are yeah i would have preferred i think the ratio's off between biscuit and filling do you think you see i don't i would like more filling oh no i would but as a biscuit goes i think that's the right amount mm. maybe it's we did more. it in a wanna so we got all the crust in it because it's like a little pie isn't let's it let's try it again Let's try it again. Wait, let me just take, drink some water because there's no moisture in my mouth anymore. Reset your palate. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what these need? A cup of tea. Why didn't we make a cup of tea, Ryan? I'm always making you cups of tea. Make me one. All right. Ready? Yeah. Try again. A little bite. Mm. How do you feel about it now? Yeah, it's less overwhelming with the crust because mm. it's a very dry crust. For yeah. Biscuit. I'm a big fan. Mm, I'm a bit disappointed. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not. Well, just the smell, of, I thought the flavour would be more zesty. A bit more lemony. What do you think? Yeah. To me... A bit more of a zing to it. That centre is zesty as fuck. It is surrounded by a little bit too much biscuit. Too but... much biscuit, yeah. I think that's the whole point of a biscuit. It's yeah. not all filling. You gotta get the biscuit on yeah, there. Yeah, so well. yeah. I love that. You love that. I do love that. Um I don't love that. No. I think I'm gonna go it if I'd have to. No. Yeah. Meet in the middle. Okay, we'll meet in the middle. Meet in the middle. We'll we'll have that again. We'll have that again. We will have that. We'll again. have that again with a cup of tea. With a cup of tea in a bit, yeah. That'll tri- that would might transform it, yeah. bump it up a little bit. Yeah, true. We'll have it again then. Tier three of the tier system. Just in case this is people's first time, what is a tier system, Ryan? We have a five tier system. We do have a five tier system when it comes to snicking, snacking, and snooing. Yes, and uh, number one being mm. the top tier, the best is called top tier. The tip of that triangle. Yep. Number two. Love that. Love that. Number three, I'd have that again. I would have that again. We'll have this again for a couple of we, Yeah. Number four, if, I'd have, if I have to, if there's nothing else going, I'd have to have that. Yeah. And then number five, 
Not good. Not good. The, the worst. worst. Dog shit. Whatever you want to call it. It's just rank. Yeah. Rubbish. Wouldn't touch it. it with an effing barge pole, mate. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But, um, yeah, all in all, today then, all the snacks I've had have been good snacking. Yeah. I've had a lot of my energy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of your daily energy. I've just had 4% there. Yeah, you have. <laughs> in two biscuits. <laughs> And uh, you will have enjoyed our snacking over a month's period where we've had to do it in four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. All right, should we uh, get into the Pixar, the let's, Disney Pixar? Uh, let's get into the Pixar then. So let's start at the very beginning, Ryan. Let's start with Toy Story. We're going to start where Pixar started. Yep. Then let's start with the start. I feel that Toy Story was an, an absolute game changer. I totally agree with you, yes. In terms of animation... And the future of kids' family films. Yeah. It started with Toy Story, and it is a legacy that's still going now, because they're bringing out Toy Story 5 in 2026, apparently, according to Wikipedia. Interesting. So, what a film. You know, beautiful, like, really cute concept that your toys are actually alive, kids' toys, and that they come to life. They just want to be played with, and they love the the person that they belong to. And they come to life and they've got the little minds of their own. Brilliantly voiced by Tom Hanks and Woody Allen. Yep. Um, and it's just it's just iconic, isn't it? The first one, it's so good. I, I can't believe it was as early as 1995. I know, that's mad, isn't um, it? Because I still, in, in, I don't know, in my mind's eye, I still think of like Disney Pixar as like modern. Yeah. But it's not because that's nearly 30 years old. But then you go back and you watch Toy Story 1, it doesn't look like a 30-year-old film. No, it doesn't. That's At what I mean, all. I think, because the animation was game-changer, because prior to that, your Disney films were always your, your classic animation, cartoons. Your, your cartoon, yeah. like your, your hand-drawn ones. Mm. Um, which, you know, so that growing up as a kid, you know, we had whatever VHSs that were available, and Disney was quite hard to get hold of. It yeah. seemed to be random what... Each household seemed to have a random assortment of their own Disney films. We had the more modern ones over the like classic classics. So we had like Hercules, yeah, Mulan, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm trying to think what we had. We had like Bambi, but then we had like Snow White and mm-hmm. two classics. Then not all classics. I can't think what we had. But we definitely didn't have Toy Story. But it was one of them that. It didn't matter because you'd seen it loads and loads and loads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't know. Is we might as well stick with Toy Story as a franchise, shall we? Yeah, so we've yeah, got, yeah. So Toy Story one ninety five, Toy Story two ninety ninety nine. What's your thoughts on Toy Story two? Now, which one was Toy Story two? That's the one where Jesse got involved. That's, loved it. That's the one that I probably know the least. Okay, now I love that one. That's the one with the um, pr- uh, what's it? What what's he call him? The pr. Proctor? No, not Proctor. The don't know what the word I'm looking for is. I don't know what the word you're the looking for The mining guy. Him and Jesse. and. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. What was the uh, horse called? Bullet or something like that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Bullseye? Bullseye, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. But Bobby's got them all in a toy box down there. Somewhere. Yeah. I think um, I've only seen Toy Story 2 once. Really? Yeah. One of them, I think I missed at the time, and I don't know if it's because we like maybe because we didn't have Toy Story one. Maybe we weren't as fussed about Toy Story two, you know. But if we had it on video and watched it all the time, then maybe my parents probably thought, "Oh, we'll, we'll definitely take them to see two. I don't remember. I can't remember to go and see two anyway. Um, so I don't really remember that one as much. But then Chicken Man steals them to sell them. Right, yes, that's it. Because yes. Woody, because it turns out that Woody was part of like a really old TV show. Prospector. Yes. Prospector, Prospector that's, that's it. Yes, before. yes. Um, yeah, and it was part of this old show, the Woody whatever show, and there was a Prospector, Jesse, Bullseye, um, and he collects all the stuff and he finds Woody, get, gets dropped or whatever, finds him, realizes he's worth a lot of money, so starts doing him up, like rubs Andy off the bottom of his foot and all that sort of stuff, ready to sell him. My mate got Andy tattooed on the bottom of his foot. He said it was the worst thing he's ever had. I can believe that. I'd abs- imagine that absolutely batter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Awful. And I bet he'd fade as well because his skin on the oh, bottom of his yeah, foot, yeah, yeah. so you'd have to have it redone several times. 
But yeah, so Toy Story Two was yeah a good one. But then it's a big jump. So it's a that was nineteen ninety nine. But then we had to wait eleven years no. for Toy Story Three. Now, what was the premise of Three again? Remind so me. So Three was the one where um, they get donated, isn't it? Accidentally oh, donated to the to the kids, to kids nursery. Yeah, they get fucked up. Yeah, and there's a lot a lot of hugs. Or whatever it's called. Yes. The bear. The hug. Yeah, he's the, the villain in it. Yeah. God, he's and, an evil little shit. Oh, God. That was a film. I remember going to the cinema, you know, even though we were like 20. Um, and everyone in the cinema was crying their eyes out. It's the scene where... The end scene. It, 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 it was the end scene and the scene where they're in the garbage compactor and they're about to be burnt. Yeah, that's and, the scene I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So then they all like hug together. Ready and, to die. Ready all to die together. And you're like, oh, this is horrific. Yeah, that Thank was... Thank you a... to the aliens. Yeah, yes. the claw. The claw. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was so good, and then it ended really nicely. So I was a little bit disappointed when they announced that we were doing Toy Story 4. Now, now, bone of contention with Toy Story 4, mate. Good film. Have you seen it? I've not seen it. Good film, completely fine. Exactly the same with you. Why are you bringing out a 4? 3 ended it perfectly. I agree. Then it came out, and yeah. I watched it, and I was like, okay, good film, that's okay. Then it'd be... Um, into the Spider-Verse to the Oscar. And I was like, fuck. It's because it's fucking Toy Story. It's not a better film. Yeah. It's not a better film. It's just fucking Disney. Yeah. And that really, it pissed me off with the Toy Story franchise and it pissed me off with the Oscars. Yeah. Because it didn't deserve uh, it. Oh, exa- exactly. It just goes to show that the Oscars, it's just um, a popularity contest. Of course it is. Of course it is. So yeah, so I've not seen four and then uh, uh, I've got five coming out. Yeah. twenty twenty six apparently. And I don't know, like, if they're still making good films, then it's kids that are going to enjoy it. But I guess for me, I felt like 3 wrapped it up really nicely. And it was sort of like the end of the era, like, as a kid. You know, because it's all, I guess, in a weird way, they kind of feel like my toys or our toys. They are our toys, mate. Because we've grown up with them. So <laughs> yeah. like, just like Andy is a little kid when Toy Story 1 came out, playing with his toys, we were of an age where we were playing with toys. Yeah. And... You could get toys of these. So then we've almost grown up as Andy's grown up. So Andy goes to college and leaves his toys behind at the end of three. But that's what we were doing. Like, yeah. I'd gone to uni. Yeah, I yeah. was similar age and left all my, like, my childhood toys and things at home. And it's felt really like relatable. You so grew then, with the film. Yeah. yeah, I grew with the film. So then it felt like a lovely ending. Like I said, I've not seen four, so I can't comment on the film itself. It just... I've just been put off because I just feel like it didn't need to happen. Yeah. It's just you're just doing it because you can't come up with new ideas, maybe, or are you just flogging it because you know it's going to make a load of money? Yeah, and this is the thing. I don't think it's a case of they can't come up with new ideas. I mean, the ideas of some of the films we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah, the, they've the, got the great newer, ideas. The newer yeah. ones are ridiculously good. Um, I just think they're flogging an old horse is yeah, all it is. And it, 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 so. ma- it makes money and it sells toys. So I get it on a business aspect, but it didn't need to be done. Yeah, and then they did the spin-off film Lightyear, didn't they? Dog shit. Did not enjoy it at all. Um, I've not seen it. Um, I think it did pretty poorly, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, did um, not enjoy Lightyear at all. Some of the shorts on Disney Plus are brilliant. Yes. There's some great shorts for their Toy Story on there. Um, yeah, no, Lightyear, didn't enjoy it. I watched it with Little and just wasn't bothered by it, if I'm honest. Wow, I was just looking at Lightyear. It apparently is a huge box office bomb. Lost yeah. about £106 million. <laughs> Ooh, It just didn't need to happen, though, again. like It was just a bit... I don't know. Just a bit unnecessary. Because you're taking yeah. away all the magical aspects of... Uh, I don't know, like... it's. It, because it's about toys, and then all of a sudden you're making them real. You're telling the story of a, what a buzz, it was. of what he was, and like his head. It just didn't. I don't know. It's just yeah. That's not what Toy Story. No, was. it's classic. Just trying to cash in on an existing franchise. It doesn't work. Yeah. Rather than having a new exciting idea. Yeah. But yeah. So where do you want to go to next? From I want Toy to go story? to Monsters Inc. next because Monsters Inc. was some of my favourite films growing up. Yeah. So Monsters Inc. the first one, two thousand and one. So that was the fourth. The fourth one ever. The one we've missed is A Bug's Life, which came out in 98. Okay, Bug's Life's okay. I saw it as a kid, never watched it again. Yeah, it's one of those that I feel like I in, I really enjoyed yeah. it, and but I've not really... We, I never went back to it. I don't think a lot of people did. And is maybe it, it's maybe it's because it was just a one-off. It was a one-off. So, because so, there was a Bug's Life, and what else? Ants, Ants came out, but that wasn't... That time. wasn't... That was a different studio, yeah, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. Um, was that DreamWorks, maybe? I think it was, yeah. Um... 
The only yeah, thing I've been thinking of, of, obviously, because for the nursery room, we've got a, at home, we've got a giant leaf. Yes. And it reminds me of Bugs Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like living, like being under a giant leaf. Yeah, like good, Bugs. to be fair, good film. Just, again, it, yeah, it's a one and done. I, I, and... I think it's because it's a one and done. It wasn't like, it's not been made to be a franchise. So how many of these other films that, you know, if they didn't make more of them, would we not be as fussed about? I don't know. Yeah, well, then things like Wally that we're going to talk about, that proves a point. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, Monsters but... Inc. So fourth on the uh, on the line. This for me was a game changer. Oh, it's so good. Again, we've got that um, Pixar, then Pixar graphics, which are just um, you know the animation style is outstanding. A story about monsters working in a factory, and the way they get their energy is from kids screaming. Yeah, so I know. they go through these doors, they scare kids at night time. So the whole you know we're scared of the monster in the closet, rah, and then they scream and they come back, and then that's their energy. But it kind of shows this really nice background of where it comes from. Yes, they're scary, but they're not scary. They're, 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 just, doing a, they're just doing a job, aren't they? They're not. They're not, they're not evil. They're not malicious. They're just literally. It's just their, them doing their job. Absolutely, and, and you know, like the and there's some terrifying looking. Like, oh monsters. God, yeah. Like fucking the the guy that owns the um, factory. Whatever his name is, oh, the like the crab. spider. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, he is. Oh, he's horrible looking. He is. He's terrifying. But uh, then who's sh- the receptionist? What's she called? Oh, um, like... Roz. Yeah, Mike. Mike Wazowski. Rock, good old Roz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's oh god. But then, like you know, the, the biggest, the best is uh, James E. Sullivan, who is just a big cuddly. Yeah, Sully, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A big um, cuddly monster. He's actually yeah. quite loving. And then you have what's the little girl's name? Is it Bo? Bo, I think, yeah, Bo, I think you're right. Bo, just the most adorable oh, so little girl. Like, Pixar knows how to make cute. Yes, like, absolutely. Like, heart-melting cute. Yeah. And that was Bo. Like, I remember growing up with this film, and I wanted to be a dad from a very young age. Like, I've always wanted a family and blah, blah, blah. And even, so watching this at that age, you know, like 16, 17, when you start thinking about the future, I was always, I want her as a daughter. I want yeah. my daughter to be just like Bo. This adorable, cute, you know, not scared of anything. You know, Sully, the scariest monster going, she just wants to cuddle it. Kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause yeah. Kitty, cause yeah exactly. And just wants just to cuddle. Not and, scared of it at all. Yeah. Just that child. It, sweet innocent child yeah it's absolutely stunning film um and then we obviously had monsters university afterwards yes which again was another big jump uh 2013 so 12 years later no nine years later sorry cause it was 2004 so was there only the two then monsters university and monsters inc yes yeah so monsters university is the backstory of yes. them going to scare college yeah basically yeah, yeah absolutely um, um i think i've seen that once yeah, I've only seen it once. Really enjoyed it again. Yeah, it just it didn't have the same magic as the original. No. And uh, perhaps because I was older as well, you know, it came out a long time after the original one. Um, yeah, nothing away from it. It, was just, it just didn't hit the heights of the first one, I thought. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Still really enjoyed it. I like the concept of it. It's still a kid's film. And like, say, we're watching as an adult. But yeah, there was some magic there. Just not the magic of when we were kids enjoying these films. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want to keep on a franchise or move on to some of the individuals that we love? Um, should we keep... I think the, there's another big one at the time. So two years after Monsters, Inc. was the one of the biggest, I think, Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, absolutely. Um, that was a great film as well. And I think, this, that, I think that's Disney Pixar really starting to play with their different... Um, I don't know, different animation styles because mm-hmm. obviously prior to that you've got Toy Story, Bugs Life and Monsters, Inc. So they're all... But then suddenly now you're setting everything underwater. It's all like realistic, a bit more realistic fish. And... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like a lovely storyline like they all do. Again, great, great characters. Yeah. Um, I mean, Dory... Marlon, yeah, you know, it's just some great, great characters. Absolutely, that come across. they're just so memorable. Um, that was a great film. Yeah, I've not seen Finding Dory. I think I've seen bits of it. I've not seen it all the way through. I'm the same as you. I think I've probably seen it. Yeah, but I don't remember it. And so I, it was probably one of those little and watched it. I wasn't paying attention. And I think it probably did all right. But again, I wonder if it's one of those where it's like it just. Um, I don't know. Like Dory's a great as a side character, but as a, as the lead, I don't know if I'd find her annoying. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, 
she works well to balance the. She needs someone to balance off with her. I don't know. Yeah, I think for for me, I think everything we spoke about now, we watched the originals as kids, and then the you know the the, the second and the third or whatever as adults. Maybe not so much with Toy Story, but Monsters Inc. stuff like. That. So we don't enjoy the second as much, and pr- that'd probably be the same with Finding Dory. But for example, Wreck It Ralph. I watched both Wreck It Ralph and Wreck It Ralph Two as adults. Right. Yeah. Uh, Breaks the Internet is the second one, so I loved them both. Like I thought, the second one was just as good as the first because I watched them both as adults. So it's not like I had some childish memory of the first that yeah. is taken away slightly by the second. I know what you mean. Um, so I think that helps a little bit as well of the the, the age you are when you watch. Them. Absolutely. Wreck It Ralph was Disney, though, wasn't it? It's not Pixar. Um. Oh, is it? I thought that was Pixar. Well, it's not. I've not got it on this list. All oh, right. Oh, I I got it from a. Oh, all right, I got it from a Pixar list, but it could it could have been wrong. You know what Google's like. Um, yeah, I was just looking at some of the ratings for these films as well. Like some of the greatest films of all time, straight away. Like Toy Story, eight point three. Yeah. You know, it's currently sitting at like the seventy seventh greatest film of all time. That's mad. Isn't Toy it? Story two, seven point nine. Toy Story three, eight point three again. Toy Story four dropped down a little bit. Eight point three. Yeah, seven point seven. Um, Finding Nemo 8.2. Wow. Monsters Inc. 8.1. Finding Dory dropped right down to 7.2. Yeah. Um, but these films are like critically acclaimed. Like, and we're not even got onto some of the bigger ones yet. But yeah, like, so, so all of those ones there, like, sitting, anything that 8.1, 8. 8. 8.2 above us, they're in the top 250 list of all time on yeah. IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, insane. Yeah. Do you want to go through your list then? Just because the ri- list I got was from a different list, so it might be wrong. Okay, so the other big franchise next that was introduced was The Incredibles. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't one I got into. No, I haven't, and I've never, I've never actually seen them. Uh, I've seen the first one. Yeah, again. And I'm pretty sure... Oh, I can't remember. Uh, is the baby in the first one? Is Jack-Jack in the first one? Um, I can't quite I remember. I think so. Because yeah. I, I, re- um, I remember, no. I remember. Yes, he is. Them. The, the only scene I remember from The Incredibles is them trying to get a suit, or, or that might have been a short. Actually, it might have been an Edna Mode short. Edna Mode. Where's my super suit? Yeah. Uh, is the second one? Has that got Frozone in it? Which is one that's got Frozone in it? Um. Yeah, I'd say they're not memorable to me. No, I, I've never seen them. I've never seen them, so I can't really comment. Yeah, um, yeah, not not one I followed, and I don't particularly know why I didn't. If I'm honest, no, I, it's just one of those that I missed. Yeah. Like Incredibles, it's got eight, it's still got eight out of ten. Yeah, Incredibles two seven point five. Again, quite big. It's a long time in between. Incredibles was two thousand and four. Incredibles two is you know two thousand and eighteen, so a fourteen year gap between films. That's mad, isn't it? And it's no wonder that some of them drop in quality since then. Yeah. Like, after following that. Cool. Move yeah. on from that one, then, because we don't know a lot about it. No. Um, so let's just keep going through the list. So then we're introduced to another big franchise, Cars. Here we go. In 2006. So I watched Cars last night. The first one. I don't really rem- remember the second or third, and I know I've seen them, but I don't remember what happens in them. Yeah, I've only ever seen the first one. And I only watched it for the first time ever two months ago. Did you? Yeah, what just did you randomly. Think of it? I enjoyed it. It didn't blow me away. No, it like it was enjoyable, but it was I, like I'm not a big car person, and I know you don't oh, have to be a big car person, but I don't know if that just put me off a little bit. And I, d- it just didn't have say, the same magic as a lot of the others. Like animation and stuff is good. Like I know it's banging song in it, <laughs> mate. Mate, the greatest song of all time. Better than Bat Dance. Well, but they're on par. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Life and is a Highway by Rascal Flatts is the greatest song of all time. Yeah. So, like, um, I enjoyed it, but I feel like its rating on IMDb is probably fair. It's got 7.2. Yeah. So, it's nowhere near the heights of the other ones, I, no, which I would what? put, I'd agree. I'd agree as well. Like, it's a 7 out of 10 film. Yeah. It's not blowing me away yeah i, I, like, I not, like the nothing story against it, i yeah. like the animation i like the story i like the characters you know mate is great um when they go track to tip in and stuff like that 
it's it's good. It's not as fun as the others. Actually. Yeah, exactly. I'd say there's only a few and, moments. And I wonder if that's because Lightning McQueen's actually a bit of a cock. He's a dickhead, isn't he? Yeah. At like, the beginning, he gets at the end. You know, he has his yeah. And you have the moment. redemption and the. But he's an arc. arsehole. Yeah, exactly. So he's just straight away. You're not as likable as likable. There's a, a that spawned three films: Cars Two in 2011 and Cars Three in 2017. Cars 2's got a pretty poor rating. It's 6.2, which is easily the worst Pixar Pixar film. film, That's pretty bad, actually. Um, You get, mate, you're getting into like your Willy's Wonderland from Nick Cage territory with that sort of rating. That's a banging film. It's way better than that. Way better than (laughs) 6.2. Cars 3, 6.7. So, yeah, again, not great. Yeah. Right, now we hit a run of incredible solo films cool. but i'm gonna to have to need you to take the lead on the first one because i've never seen it ratatouille uh, years and years ago again it was good i i enjoyed it little remy the rat yeah um it was a one and done for me like, okay i enjoyed it It was okay you know what? i'm just not massive into like it's, it's weird to say this i'm watching the bear at the minute but like it just doesn't interest me films set around like restaurants and shit right okay it's, yeah. it's just not do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm going to be watching an animated film, I want it to have monsters and and all types of crazy sh- happenings going on. Yeah, it's that's just a, fair. It's just a chef rat. Yeah, I get that. I've not seen it. Again, it's got 8.1. It's currently the 204th greatest film of all time. Yeah, so it's it was rating. fine. It was years ago I watched it. I've never had the urge to watch it again. Yeah. But like I said, I watched it a long time ago. So Yeah, fair. Then we go into a... Maybe the best one of all time. Is it Wally? It's Wally. What 2008. I think I only watched that for the first time last year. Again, it was another one I just missed. That's mad to me. And instantly I can see why. It's got 8.4 on IMDb. Yeah. It's 8.4. It's just a magical, magical film. Mm-hmm. And it's got such a good message behind it about how we're destroying the planet and how us humans, we're very much like the humans in that. We just want everything... And, we don't want to be lazy and we want everything just given to us and we don't yeah. want to get off our asses and we just then we just lose so much. Rely we, on robots and Yeah, ju- just to fix all our problems for us. And it's just this little Wally who's like just ca- happily doing his job on his own. He's so cute. Like they do so well. I feel like the animation really jumps up for this film. Big time, yeah. It's stunning. It's beautiful. Some of the shots of the of the of Earth like the wide shots of like the destroyed earth it's just basically a giant garbage dump and um the shots of space it's just oh, it's just stunning like the music everything about it is just and it's so heartfelt and Wally, again like what it's different from him and lightning mcqueen is I'm rooting for Wally from yeah. d- the second I see him. All he wants to do is hold a hand. Yeah, he just wants a bit of human connection. Yeah. And again it's all like that's sort of what all he wants is what his humans have given up yeah. because they yeah, yeah, prefer, yeah. they won't interact with each other. Even though they're all around each other, they only talk through their screens. Yeah. And this was pre, like, j- social media was only just becoming a thing when this yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really clever how it's just, like, predicting the future as well, like how we're losing so much connection. And yeah. I don't know, the, the meanings behind it, oh, it's just everything about it. I, you couldn't get a better animated Disney film. It's just a perfect film. I totally agree with you. Uh, yeah, it's got 8.4. It's an average rating from 1.2 million votes. Yeah, there you go. It's it's insane. Like, r- currently ranked the 58th greatest film of all time. Yeah, I and- love it. <clears throat> Again, it's just absolutely adorable. W- Wally. Wally is probably one of their best characters, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. don't get me wrong. You've got the big ones. You've got Woody. You've got Buzz. You've got Sully and Mike. But Wally, to me, is the one. Yeah, I agree. Wally's the one. He's the one that you want as your friend. Oh, uh, you want him in your house. Yeah, you do. You just want him there just to just to be just to be Just to be Wally. With. I don't and, want you to do any jobs. Do you no. know? Take the bin out, Wally. No. It's fine. Just it's hold a hand. Yeah, exactly. We'll hold hands and watch Wally together. Yeah, I know. It'd be lovely. Um... And I think that's a testament because exactly what you're saying there, we've got that connection with Wally. He's in one film. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not a big franchise. We've not got three, three, four, five films of him. Don't need it's, it. It's one film, and it's the best. And it's it, the best one. He's probably got a few shorts on Disney Plus. Yeah. I would have oh, thought. Yeah. They do a lot of them, and they're normally quite good. And I don't mind that. Yeah. Because that's fine. But you don't need to like flog a flog a dead horse or anything. No. So. No. Yeah. Amazing. And that's a. That was 2008, then 2009, they followed up with Up. 
Oh my god. Now, did you cry at the opening scene? Oh god, yes. Of course. Everyone does. I feel like that is the best part of the film, though. Um, like, I don't know. I I love the film. I do love the film. I'm not I, taking anything away from the film. I just think like that is such an emotional roller coaster in the first five minutes of a film. What a way to set a it's film! It's such up. a sucker punch, and you're just invested, then, aren't you? Weirdly enough, going, going back to the Lightning McQueen thing, he starts off he's an arsehole, so you're not rooting for him. Um, Frederick, what's his name? Is it Frederick Erickson or something? What's his name? It's. Uh, I'll tell you. Carl Fredrickson. Carl Fredrickson, that's it. So, Carl is an arsehole. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he goes through the same sort of thing, but that you completely understand why he's the way he is. Yeah. He's a grumpy old man yeah, who's course. lost the love of his life that wants to be left alone to just get on with life and eventually die and be with his be with his beloved. Yeah. That's all he wants. Absolutely. And then yeah. fucking Russell. Fucking Russell. Fucking Russell just won't piss off. Just piss off Russell. All he wants to do is put a load of balloons on his house, fly the house out to the fucking middle of nowhere to be where him and his wife decided they wanted to set up shop yeah. and die. That's all he wants to do. Oh, yeah. And fucking little fat Russell comes along. Was he? Is, is he selling something? I think. It's yeah, he's like a, it's like a, he's like a Boy Scout, Boy Scout or something, yeah. isn't he? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. But then you know you come out with you get other classic like uh, what's the dog called? Uh, uh, um, Doug. Doug, yeah, Doug the dog. Doug, Doug the dog, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got um, a voice box so he can talk. Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. <Yeah. laughs> Absolute banging film. It is Love a good, it. good one. Heart wrenching. I think this was, again, a standalone film. They really hit the ball out of the park with, oh, with storyline. Yeah, yeah they one. did. They did. This was just shows just. With Wally and then up, the, that's Pixar really getting into the feels. There's, they're more emotionally wrenching than like your Toy Stories. Absolutely, yeah. I, it's not taking anything away from Toy Story because Toy Stories are great, but they've come on so far where they've, the animation was always great right from the start, but this is where they're really getting their stories and the emotional connections in as well. Yeah. Uh, so you making they're making classics absolutely. they're making greatest films of all time at this now. point you trust pixar with your life absolutely yeah um i don't want to read them all out because a lot of them we've covered already because now we're getting sequels cars uh, brave brave love it yeah yeah um maybe we've discussed this or maybe we're going to discuss this in a future <laughs> we don't know in what order we're releasing these episodes but we have talked about but brave we have recently spoke about brave in a previous episode we've recorded today yeah so if you've heard it Brilliant. Go back and listen to that bit. If not, you're going to hear my feelings on Brave. Exactly. <laughs> it's a great film, though, and all I will say is one of those that, is, for some reason, is not counted in the same brackets as a lot of these. Weirdly and, and not. I don't, I don't know why. It's just almost forgotten about a little yeah, bit, I think. And I don't know why, because I absolutely love it. In fact, for Christmas, I bought Bobby a new, because she had a uh, Merida doll. Uh, it probably went to Mum's house, and we've never seen it again, but I bought her a new one that could fire a bow and arrow and shit, just because... I know she likes it. We've not watched it together in a while. And it was one of those, I bought it, and then we sat down and we watched the film again together. Because I just love it. Oh, Such yeah. a great... And it's great to have a Pixar film set in Scotland as well. Oh, yeah. It's just great, yeah, It's just it? nice a bit of a change yeah. of pace, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Inside Out. Banging film. Unbelievable film. Really, really clever. About emotions and how it plays and takes their own. It sort of almost makes people... I think it's probably... Probably quite in- educational for people as yeah, well, like it, about you know realizing that all oh, your emotions and your core memories, and it's quite clever how it does that. And I fucking love the bit where it's like where they throw the guys who clean up just throw up the jingles randomly back up to like central. <laughs> so he's yeah. like, it's like representing where you get something stuck in your head just on repeat. You're like fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Oh, it's such a good film. Another one, an emotional roller coaster. I've not seen Inside Out 2, which came out earlier this it's year. Banging. It's great. I've heard good things. Um, yeah, what a lovely, lovely and, film. And, and again, it's another one um, quite educational um, for kids, understanding the emotions. And yeah. all of a sudden, you know, puberty. So we've now got anxiety, we've got um, embarrassment, you know, got all these things going on um, that are pushing away things like joy to be overridden by anxiety. So it, it's very good storyline. Oh, and yeah. it took Riley's character the perfect direction for the film. Yes. Great, great films, great films. Yeah, and again, sitting really well, like 8.1 yeah. on IMDb, so really good. Um, 
the next one I one I know bugger all about the good dinosaur. So apparently this is fucking sad, man. Really? Yeah. Apparently this is a great film. I've never watched it. I know Bobby has. Uh, my little and she's watched it many times. Just never got around to watching it. But yeah, I've heard it's really sad. Yeah. It, it, no, it, it I don't really don't know films. anything about it. No. Um, not a great rating on IMDb, 6.7, but okay. I don't know anything about it, really. Just yeah. one that I've completely missed. Um, yeah, my little one's mum um, told me she watched it and got choked up with it, and that girl's heartless. Right, okay. Like, nothing makes her sad. I, I've when, when we were dating, we watched I Am Sam together, and she just sat there like, what is this shit? And I'm like, I cry every time at I Am Sam. John Wick, though, cried at John Wick when the dog died, didn't she? She told of course me, she did. Yeah, she was like, I don't give a fuck about any humans dying in films if a dog gets hurt, but she did say good dinosaur got her. Right, fair. Um, then we, we've got, again, lots of lots of things we already talked about. There's another unbelievable one, maybe vying for top spot, actually, for me, this one. Go on. Coco. Coco is... It's a banger, and I don't know where it is on that radar because my group of friends is quite forefront. Yeah. Um but that's only a small collective of people. So <clears throat> I hope it is as popular as we think. Yeah. Um, it is beautiful. That is the one that gets me emotionally more than any others. Yeah. It, Mama Coca at the end. I can't, I can't deal with it. To, to the point where it, it, I won't watch the film because of that. Really? Because I, I know if I'm going to watch that film, I, n- I need to be mentally prepared to oh, go into yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah. Emotionally prepared to go into that film. It's not one of them where, like Claire said before, she's like, oh, should we just stick on Coco? I'm like, no. no. I need to psych myself up if I'm going to watch Coco because it gets me in the feels. It's a beautiful film. Obviously about like set in Mexico and it's about um, the day, day, of the day of the dead and, and he journeys to the land of the dead and it's... Oh, it's such a beautiful film, to me, and about far, yeah, and like past. yeah, and all about the connection with music and stuff. Oh, it's just stunning. the music is unreal. Yeah, and again, if we're gonna go off animation, so um, what's his name? The kid. Yeah. Um. Oh, testing me now. I'll have, yeah. to, I'll have to Google it. Let, let's Google this because I don't want to get this wrong. The kid is Miguel. Miguel. Um. I, I thought it was Miguel, but I didn't want to come across as stereotypical. <laughs> if it wasn't, that, I, I, yeah. it would not have looked good for me. Um, yeah, so Miguel. So obviously he plays uh, classical guitar in it. There's a lot of classical, uh, classical um, like Mexican music in it. Um, and when he plays a guitar, the fret, the fretting he does is the actual music. So if you was to play it on the guitar, he, the animation of him playing is exactly how you would play. Oh, it amazing! Life. So That's it is cool. set to actually play the music, which I think is unreal as a guitarist myself not a great one just to be able to see that in animation is is ridiculous and like your classic spanish um guitar playing is fuck hard anyway yeah oh yeah yeah. i I can play a few spanish riffs and they are hard hard yes um but oh mate it's probably fighting for my top spot as well yeah and rating wise it is as well it's the sec it's the joint highest 8.4 with wally it's just had a few less people vote for it but it's still up there um I'm gonna. I'm just gonna read out all the rest okay. because I feel like we go into an era of Disney, which we've been in for the last four years. Apart from sequels, well, even apart from Inside Out two that came out since 2020, there's been a slew of films that I feel have all kind of missed the mark, and it, I feel like we're in a bit of a downward trajectory with really? Disney and Pixar. So I'm just gonna read out all these. I'm not saying they're bad films; they're just not at this. They're not at the peak that they were with, like, your Coco, your, your Wally, your Ups. So we've got Onward. Now, I think this is a hidden gem, mate. I fucking love that, but I'm a big Dungeon & Dragons. I'm a big yeah. fantasy fan. So that really speaks to me on a personal level. I can see why other people wouldn't like it as much. I don't know, but I think it's such a beautiful story. It is, it is. I, I don't get why that isn't as big as it was. Great cast as well. Yeah, such Chris, a good film. Uh, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, isn't yeah, it? it? Yeah, it is, yeah. As the two brothers. Soul. Loved it. Again. Is that Mahersha Ali? Mahersha Ali. It is. We've got Ooh. pointed out that we've said his name about 40 different ways. Oh, yeah. We say it different every time. I mean, Soul's got oh, a no, great... Oh, no. Is it Jamie Foxx? Soul's got... It's Jamie Foxx. Jamie Soul's Fox. got a good rating. It's got eight. It's, so that's the highest rated one for a long time. It's, I was so excited when I saw this yeah, coming out. Yeah. I've... Yeah, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. I've, yeah. like, I've only seen the one, so maybe I need to rewatch it again. Luca. Mm, 
My Little One's obsessed with this film at the minute. Don't really speak to me. No, it's not got great reviews. Turning Red. That was okay. But, I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, but again, I think it's not got great ratings. Lightyear, we've talked yeah, about. Dog shit. Elemental, again. It was... I th- they're not it. bad films. Nah. They're not bad films, but they're not at the same heights that they have been, I think. They're, they're not. I mean, the thing about Elemental to me, it, it reminded me a lot of Inside Out. It, it did. The, the animation style, obviously, it's about the elements. It's about fire, water, that sort of stuff. I like the idea. I like the idea of fire falling in love with water. Yeah. You know, and it's like the message is about that, isn't it? The races little... can't... Yeah, mix and they don't work well together exactly. and stuff. And I really like the bit sort of when they're coming together and they create steam. And I, I really enjoyed the film personally. I get it. Unfortunately, you're not going to hit the Toy Story heights and the Monsters Inc heights. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because they've got the capability to do that. Mm. I just feel like I don't know. Like they're always going to try something different in terms of their animation style and try and play with different things, oh, like elemental and stuff, which they are doing. I think it's perhaps the stories just aren't as good, or maybe yeah. the scripts aren't. Because if, you, it. if we're talking about like difference, like obviously let's look at them films. They're Elemental, Soul, Onward, Luca, all of them completely different. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All yeah. of them completely different stories, completely different backdrops. You know, they really get to sort of have that, um, really show their their animation style and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. And like I say, out of all of them, Luca didn't really interest me. Turning Red was pretty good, but again, that's probably not my. It's not my bag. It's not made for me. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Unfortunately, I, I, I think the heyday of Pixar has been. Um, P- yeah, possibly. But it's weird because I only think that as an adult. Yeah. I'm not a child. I'm not the target audience for these films. True, but then a lot of these films I've only watched when I've been older, like Wally, um, True, things yeah. like that. So and I think the classics are still always going to hold up. Yeah. Um. And, and you know, it's a weird one as well because they're still bringing out Disney films and a lot of Disney films are really good. So, but it's weird because there is a distinction between Disney and Disney Pixar, but they kind of isn't at the same time as well. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's all yeah, a bit yeah. blurred. Like the lines are a bit blurred and someone probably can correct me and tell me the difference unless it's just purely an animation studio. I think it probably is just the animation um, studio. Yeah. Right? But, you know, I mean, just when it comes to animation itself... Again, not much difference. We're still getting bangers from Disney. Oh, yeah. We're still getting bangers from DreamWork. Yeah. You know, they still... I mean, Minions, like, the, the their... What's the... Not Minions, the actual film. Despicable Me. Despicable Me. They're all great. You know, I love Gru as a character. So there's, there's a lot of animation out there coming up that is still brilliant from oh, the Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, studios. absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I just think... I just think Pixar hit the nail on the head. And even the ones that we're not mega, mega into, they're still great films. Oh, they're yeah, they're, good they're films. not making bad films. And you know you're going to get... And, and kids love them. That's the thing. Kids love them. Like, they will watch... They don't care about the ratings. They don't care about reviews. They will watch a film, and like a new one will come out, and they'll watch it to death. And you know what, mate? Sometimes what I respect is is that we're watching a film, and kids can get obsessed and love films such as Luca that you're not going to be buying toys for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They've had the time of selling the toys, the Monsters, Inks, the Toy Stories, the cars. They ain't bringing out a fucking toy of Onward or or Soul. Or there might be some. There might be a small a, range, a, a yeah. A very small range that you're not going to find in Toys exactly, R Us. Exactly, yeah. And you know what? I respect that. And the, the, these films are what they are for what they are. They're good storytelling. And they're not made... Because this is the thing with animation. Uh, some animation is solely made for merchandise. Yes. And um, it's nice to have animation that isn't that. It's just a good story, good storytelling, good script. And films like this pulling big actors. Oh, God, they always will do, yeah. Um, which is great. So, you know, yeah, ha- hats off to them. And, and it's nice to see that. Cause... And more people probably have access to all these films now as well because of Disney+. Plus. Yeah, absolutely. We pay our £10 a month or whatever, or 12 quid a month, whatever it is, and we get to see these films. Yeah. And, and they come out very quickly. Disney don't fuck about. No, I think they've realised that people aren't going to the cinema anymore. Yeah. And people aren't going to go to the cinema because why bother go to the cinema when you can get it on Disney Plus? Yeah, exactly. Um, but Disney probably don't need to worry about that because they've they've got they have got the revenue coming in through Disney Plus. So yeah, exactly. They're still making the money somewhere. Definitely, but well, hopefully that means it just means that studios like Pixar will be given that license to just keep creating films because they don't have to worry financially. You'd like to hope. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd, I'd like to just see more. I, I don't want to see yeah. the same. I'm not interested in Toy Story 5 or Monsters, Inc. 3 or Cars 4. Let's have some more of these souls, some more onwards, some more ups. Yes, That's what I, I want to see. I agree, some... I agree. 
some lovely storytelling. Yeah. Keep them coming. Bro, that was a great episode. There's so many good ones to talk about. Yeah. It's just like a whistle stop tour again. Of course. And, and, and I think films like this, you know, it takes you back to your childhood. But also at the same time, like I say, we watched Wally as adults. We watched a lot of these films as adults. And yeah. we still enjoy them to this day. They just bring something to you. Some of them make you cry like your Cocos and your Ups. Oh. But some of them just make you feel good. Start yeah. to finish. When Wally and Eve finally embrace... Lovely. It's all you need in life, isn't it? Is, it? it is. The smile on your face as a 36-year-old man yeah. <laughs> watching these, these two robots just embrace in space. I know. Beautiful. It's, it's fucking beautiful, <laughs> man. It's so beautiful. This is what we're missing in our lives. It's, life is hard enough. I know. Just keep giving us Pixar films. Exactly. Right. Well, I think that's all we've got time for today. I've really enjoyed this episode once again. We've had some bangers today. Really we enjoyed. We have. Really enjoyed what we spoke about. Um so as always if you're not following us on facebook instagram x please go do that if you're listening to us on spotify please give us a review five stars would be beautiful just say yo bro like these guys they're fun in it mm. also share with your friends and family because you never know they might enjoy it yeah you know we've had a few people recently that are quite new to the podcast and have gone really enjoyed what we heard numbers are looking good again so yeah. please keep it sharing get us bigger big things coming <laughs> Remember when we used to say that every week and big things didn't come? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big we... things are coming. <laughs> Let's get back on that train. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure, right. I'm sure Megan will, th- yeah, Megan will think of something. Megan will think of something big that we can do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, Ryan, um, please finish this episode with something something that Pixar would like us to like us to go away with. You know, something that makes us happy and heartfelt. Um, okay. I can't think of anything Pixar related, but I do have some advice. Go. It's not related to Pixar, though. It's fine. It's more advice that you'd seen a Pixar film. Okay. Yeah, I could think this advice could be from in a Pixar yeah. film. So, in life, just remember the five rules of dodgeball. <laughs> Dodge, dip, duck, dive, and, and dodge. dodge. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>